Why do you have to wear a swim cap? Um, I I have no idea. I actually have never asked the question. I'm just, oh, it's kamikaze dives. Um, I think I would say because they want to keep the pool like clean. They don't want hair falling out in the pool. I don't know. Yeah, they they yeah, they get hair in the pool. They want to they want to clean it. You know, they have to be responsible for cleaning the pool. So maybe that's why you have to wear swim caps for cleanliness, I guess. I'm going to say that's the reason. <laughs> that's a really good question. I should ask. Next time I go, I'm going to ask. No life in the streets, huh? They can murder you on tape now. How I'm supposed to eat, huh? With my pockets getting raped, why? Officers oversee the demise of the family. Prisons are property. I'ma buy one and release me. That's the sound of your last dream. That's the sound of your dead son. How he only 12? But you saw him and he had a gun. I think like the first time I went to China, I wanted to have like a brand new experience or adventure. Um, definitely wanted to see different cultures, different people. Um, and so that was my like first reasoning to go to China. Second reason was I found out that through teaching I actually really enjoyed it. So this gave me the opportunity to just try out that new skill, that new passion. So um, now I feel like I go back to China because, hmm, definitely like the food. Definitely still like the culture. There's aspects of it I don't like, but. Um, I like being in a big city. Um, as you can see, like, I don't know, grew up in like the rural, ruralist sections of America, very country, so living in like big cities of 10 million is like really exciting, so. Um, and I guess that's about it. Okay, um, when I first went to China, it was 2009, and I lived in Hong Kong for a summer. Um, and then after that, I lived in Nanjing, uh, Nanchang, um, Changchun, up in the north, uh, right by Harbin. Well, like eight hours away from Harbin by train. But and then after that, uh, Urumqi. Yeah, the West is like. I don't know, how do you explain the West? I mean, the West is like. I like say it's wild. Um, there's tons of different ethnic groups there. It's kind of like Yunnan province where there's a lot of different minority ethnic groups there too. Um, I think that you get a lot of the stares there because there's just not that many black people there. Um, but it's also not like, oh, what are you type of stares. It's like, I've just never seen you. And I just watched like a basketball game the other day and I saw a black person there and now you're actually in my city. Whoa, this is so cool. Um, I love the Uyghur people. Uyghur people love black people. When I found out uh, they had a race riot there, like in 2009, um, Han Chinese people came in. I don't know why. I have no idea why this happened. But like they came in to, I don't know, like do something. Like, I don't know. They went into like downtown uh, Arumchi and kind of like turned over the stalls and just bothered the, all the Uyghur people. They had like this really big race riot there between the Uyghurs and the Hans. Um, and they kind of still remember that, kind of, I don't know, I guess still gets under people's skin when you talk about things like that. Um, and so then when I was there, it was 2013 and 2015, and there, uh, Ferguson, I think Ferguson had happened around that time. and. Freddie Gray instance happened around that time. Goodness. And um, I felt like Uyghur people could actually understand where I was coming from because they had experienced their own sort of issues. So in that sense, I felt like a lot of love. It's kind of under a sad circumstance, but felt a lot of love with like Uyghur people. Like, oh, wow, you understand like adversity and struggle. So anyway, but um, other cool things about being in Arumchi, the food is great. Muslim food is awesome. Um, the people are friendly there. Sometimes you get some people that are kind of obnoxious, but that's anywhere you go. Um, I taught at Xinjiang Normal University. So taught in the English department. 
and some of the differences there is a big Muslim culture. Um, so you'll hear the call to prayer like five times a day. Um, you'll see people that will be praying in the, like, the mosque and stuff or just outside, they'll pray there. And that's really cool. It's a different aspect of culture you don't normally get to see. Um, and just being around just a different, I guess like people group all the time, it's just, it's an eye-opening experience. Like I didn't know that China had that many ethnic groups there. So finding that out and recognizing like I guess the multi-layeredness of China was, was pretty cool. So and then those ways, Arumchi is pretty different than I guess like the Western part, like the big cities like Shanghai and Beijing. <laughs> Arumchi is awesome because it's actually really political too. So, and they tell us as Americans that we shouldn't get into that but I can't help being extra black and getting into it. So they have like their, their own time zone that the local minority people adhere to, and I also adhere to it. So they have like Beijing time and then local people time. And so local people time is like two hours. It's actually geographically correct. It's like three hours, is it three or two? Anyway, one of the two, three or two hours behind Beijing time, which is what it would be like, because China's like the same size as America. And so it's pretty much saying like everyone should have DC time, like the whole dang on United States would have DC time if like we went on the concept of China having one time zone. That's pretty much what it would be like. So um, anyway, the people in uh, Arumchi have like their local time and it's like the coolest thing. So I like, when I'm there with my friends, I often wake up at local time seven, which would be Beijing time nine o'clock. Yeah, so it works for me, I like it. But except when school starts, cause then you're waking up at Beijing time like eight and it's local time like six o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh my gosh, this sucks really bad. But Well, because it's government, like runs everything that you still work on Beijing time but if you're with your local friends they run on their own time university still runs on Beijing time so all the local people just get agitated that they have to be at school at like six local time eight Beijing time mm -hmm. but if you're in a heavily like populated area where you're like you're not going to you're not going to school anymore um, and it's just like everyone in the area is all like local minority people when they just open up with their regular local people time so it works i love the food i love the friends that i've made and the fact that i can call them up at a moment's notice and be like hey i'm back in china what do you need let me help you out um, or if they don't have if they're not there oh i know a friend of a friend of a friend who's there who will help you out because relationships matter in china um, I love seeing all the cultural sites um, and I love, weirdly enough, I love when Chinese people want to take you on hikes. I know people like don't like the hiking aspect of Chinese culture. If you don't know, Chinese people have like mountains everywhere and every famous city has a famous mountain and I love hiking all of that. Um, so it's like my favorite thing to do. Um, I, like, I, I like the pools in China. I do. I, I don't like the fact that I have to wear a swim cap when I go, but I like the pools in China because it gets hot and I like to swim, so there you go. Um, and I like the fact that I can find like random stuff like for random purposes. Like one time my shoe broke and there was a shoe cobbler like chilling, like I can fix your shoe. Like, in America, I have no idea where to get that done. You know, so that's really cool. I like that. That's like, it's random. It's super random. They even have a fix your glasses. Like you break your glasses, you just find the glasses sign and like, can you fix glasses here? Yes, of course, absolutely. This is China, we get to, I love it. So just like the random shoe, glasses, fixing places that is in China and whatnot. Yeah, I like it. I love, 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 Ramadan. I don't necessarily like fasting. Like I don't like fasting for Lent either, okay? So, but um, but I love like Eid al-Fitr at the end when you get to get to get together with everyone and get to eat. Best, best time ever. Um, they take the lambs and they um, make like this pit in the ground and they sacrifice the lamb like right there. So you can like see the whole entire thing. 
happening like right like on your street. Like say there was like like I don't know like a pit like right over there. They would take the take all the sheep and then like get it together, sacrifice the lamb. You'd have your lamb for your meal. It's like the coolest coolest holiday ever. And I got to experience it two times being out there. Now, I spent two years taking uh, Mandarin courses when I was in China, in Changchun up in the north. Um, so I'm pretty fluent. There are times when I like don't know what's going on. Either I'm not paying attention or I just like miss like a few words. But um, yeah, so I've taken two years at um, Northeast Normal University up in Changchun. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes I know just enough Chinese to get myself into trouble and not enough to get out. And then I'm like, I need a friend. I think I've just said something that is totally wrong and I can't get out, but I can run fast. So, I mean, you know, you can't catch me <laughs> if I really needed to run away. But normally I just call a friend and then I explain to them in English what I mean and then they will help me retranslate what I've said. But that doesn't happen very often now. My friend, my really good Chinese friend Marina and I went down to Guangzhou and I saw that there was like this area, Tianhe, that had like a ton of Africans and uh, Middle Easterners and um, I just really wanted to check that city out. I was like, I have to get down here. <laughs> I have to see what that city's all about. Um, and so um, I knew I was going to come back home for my uh, master's degree program, but I knew I was going to be going back to China, and I, I thought to myself, well, if I go back, I want to go to that city again, and so that's what prompted me to sign up with English first, and then pick Guangzhou, and hopefully I'm in that area. I've since learned that it has, like, gone through a beautification process, which really pisses me off, but, I mean, I'm hoping there's still some, some um, just, like, still people down there that, um, that I met before. Um, I mean, it was like, it was really cool. I was able to meet like, just this random girl from Kenya. Like, where I, was, like I wanted to get my braids done. So I was like, hey, sis, I see you have your braids done. And she was like, oh, I'm, I'm from Kenya. And I was like, I'm from America. Where'd you get your braids done at? I'm trying to get my braids done. She was like, oh, I can help you out. It was, it was cool. It was like being around family. It was, it was really nice. I was like, I have to get back down to this city, so. My pet peeve would be like, when people say welcome to China and I've been there for six years. Like, it's not my first time being here, but thank you. Um, the second one would be um, when people constantly want to take photos and they don't ask. Even if they ask, it sometimes still gets on my nerves, but if like random people just try to like sneak a photo of you when you're like walking to the airport. I've had someone come up and just try to take a photo of me like I'm like, just standing there minding my own business in a line and then they'll try and, you know, take photos and I'm like, would you stop it? Or come up and ask or, um, or when they want to touch your fro, that's annoying. So I'm like, people's hands are not clean and that's my hair and it's on my body and leave me alone. <laughs> um, oh, also when like random IEs want to like cut in the line because they're old and they feel like they can just cut in line for whatever. No, you can't, like, also, when you go to the store and there's only like two lanes open and the lines are super, super long and you have like 50 to 60 workers just chilling in the aisles, like, how can I help you? Like, and I'm like, you can help by being in the cashier line. Like that actually would be, that would be helpful. Like, you don't need to be here to help me. Like, I don't know. That's, that's just not helpful. That's obnoxious. So, um, and going across the road in China because traffic is just like, it's like a game of Frogger. So that, you know, I feel like the excuses that my friends give me is, oh, China is not as developed as America. So therefore our traffic patterns are like this. Or the better one, China has so many people. And I say, well, Japan has a lot of people and Japan has like, perfect traffic patterns like I don't you know like they just super orderly and you know it's perfect um, so that's not an excuse you know um, they say oh Japan's more developed I say no that doesn't matter like you should have rules and you should follow them so if the stop sign says you should stop oh UMES hot fried ketchup <laughs> get your passport oh my god get your passport you need like another form of ID anyway so get your passport 
Um, and then like just make plans to go do something and then do it. It's like the 20, what, 21st century? Like you have no excuse to not go out there and like see all that there is to see. If, especially if that's something that you're really looking to do, then just like, I mean, make moves and make it happen. Like um, this next year, I wanna go to the Tomatillo Festival in Spain. Um, so you get to like pick up tomatoes and like throw them at people. I felt like that sounds like fun. <laughs> So definitely want to go and do that. Hey, the cicadas are so loud. <laughs> yeah, that thing's as loud as mine. Okay, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I would say definitely do it. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it because you went to an HBCU. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it because you grew up in like, I don't know, North Philly or West Side of Baltimore. Like, get, get it done. Make it happen. If that's what you want to do with your life, then do it. Wait, what? You didn't see? There's a witch right there. Okay. Oh. All right. How I look. Ready. We're ready for my close up, Mr. Janelle. Thank you. <laughs>